to go with Michelle Tafoya. Well, Coach, you started the season 0-4, but since then have won five of your last seven. What have been the significant factors behind that turnaround? I just think the singular focus of, of the guys, just having the ability to zero in on the challenge of the week and, and, and void out the noise. It's obviously there's a lot of noise when it comes with the kind of start that we had, but they've done a nice job of just being mentally tough. This is Steelers-Ravens, and if recent history is to be our guide, this will be decided by a field goal or less. How does the winning team generate an edge in this game? You know, you don't absorb enough negativity early on. I think that's kind of been what has marked the flow of these games. we got to avoid some negativity. Obviously, we got to make some plays down the stretch, and the kicking game is going to be big. Coach, thank you. Thank you. And the Steelers will be without starting defensive tackle Steve McClendon tonight, missing his first game because of an ankle injury. They'll also be without linebacker Lamar Woodley, who's missing his third straight game with a calf issue. But they do get back defensive end Brett Kiesel, who missed the last two games with plantar fasciitis. All right, thank you, Michelle. The bearded one, there he is, number 99. Baltimore won the toss, so Lex to defer. Justin Tucker having a great year. A very demonstrative kicker. To kick off to Emmanuel Sanders, one of the Steeler wideouts, and on this chilly night in Baltimore, off we go with a bouncing ball that's fielded four yards in, and Sanders will down it there. And let's take a look at the Pittsburgh Stars. Ben Roethlisberger, Miami Redhawks. Le'Veon Bell, Michigan State. Will Johnson, West Virginia. Antonio Brown, Central Michigan. Emmanuel Sanders. SMU. Heath Miller, Virginia. Kelvin Beecham, Southern Methodist University. Ramon Foster, Tennessee. Fernando Velasco, Georgia. David DiCastro, Stanford. Marcus Gilbert, University of Florida. Steelers of late have been using a lot of extra linemen. Six offensive linemen on occasion. Right now they come up in a situation where, as you can see, you've got three linemen to the right. In motion goes Jericho Pottery who has scored seven touchdowns this season. They begin with a draw play to the rookie running back, Le'Veon Bell, who was their number two draft choice out of Michigan State, tackled by Haloti Nata. I think Haloti Nata is feeling better right now. Right over the nose tackle, just takes a swim move and gets in the backfield. And when he is athletically active like that, to go along with that huge size of his, you have problems on the offensive line. It's a reconstructed, revamped Raven defense. You know that Ray Lewis has retired. Ed Reed is gone. A lot of guys are gone from last year, but they have really picked it up of late, and that's the reason for the optimism around here. To the outside, and another reason for the optimism are plays like that. Ladarius Webb gets him behind the line of scrimmage. So two runs. And a loss of two here, third down and 12. Ben Roethlisberger, fifth career start at Baltimore. Steelers in those starts, averaging only 8.3 points per game, but he's two and two as a starter in this stadium. Third down and 12. Monday. They bunch three receivers to the right, keep it on the ground. And to the 25-yard line goes Bell. So three runs for the rookie. And then, of course, it's Pittsburgh and Baltimore, so you'll see a lot of activity like that after the whistle tonight. Still trying to get them unpiled. Cleek Blakeman and his crew will have their hands full. We're a minute and a half into the game, and we already have this. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say it, but this is what makes this game so great. And it goes, look at the hole in the middle here. Ben saw it. They stack everybody to the outside to try and get pressure. So he goes, OK, I'm just going to turn around and hand the thing off. But in talking with Ben Roethlisberger last night, <laughs> he said you'd see stuff like that. Chris Canty sort of a pile drive and then a couple of shoves and the big guys get into it. And, and we kind of got a Pittsburgh Baltimore game breaking out all over here. Happy holidays. Matt McBriar, who was picked up in the middle of the season, is the Pittsburgh punter Jacoby Jones to return the kick. And he is always a threat. Big booming kick. Jones from his 19 yard line. Brings it back out to the 28 yard line. Tackled by Antoine Blake. And let's take a look at the Baltimore offense. 
Joe Flacco, Delaware. Ray Rice, New Rochelle High School. Torrey Smith, Maryland. Jacoby Jones, the Mighty Lane College. Marlon Brown, University of Georgia. Ed Dixon, Oregon Ducks. Eugene Monroe, University of Virginia. A.Q. Shipley, Penn State. Gino Gradkowski, Delaware. Marshall Yonda, Iowa. Michael Orr, University of Ole Miss. So Baltimore, all season long, trying to get some running game going. Start with play action, and Flacco going deep! And out in front is Jones. There's contact, but there's no flag. It's a little bit underthrown. William Gay was there. Jacoby Jones had beaten him, but the ball hung, and the pass is incomplete. Second and ten. I tell you, William Gay got away with everything here. He's going to bump back into him to slow him down. He knows he's beaten, and then flips his head around at the last minute so he doesn't get called for pass interference. Just a good veteran play. William Gay was great last week. Probably got away with a little something on that one, but you got to give him some credit. A very intelligent play. Ravens beat the Jets 19-3 here on Sunday, with Jones scoring the only touchdown of the game. Play clock at one out of the pistol on second down and ten, and they give it to Ray Rice. Unbelievably averaging less than three yards per carry, tackled by Polamalo. So Joe Flacco. Had a postseason for the ages. He's terrific in this stadium, 37 and 8. Drafted in 2008 and started as a rookie. He and John Harbaugh coming in together, and he parlayed that offseason into a $120 million contract. And John Harbaugh has taken this team to the postseason in each of his years at the helm, and at least one postseason win in every one of those seasons. Third and seven. Flacco gets it away. It's caught on the outside by Brandon Stokely, and he has enough for a first down. One of the interesting parts about the Pittsburgh's defense now is their great playmaker, Troy Polamalu, is now almost playing a linebacker position in the dime defense. And one of the things in talking to the Ravens about that is it takes him out of a little bit of that X factor role that he does so well, where you just don't know where he's going to be. Back in at linebacker here again. To the outside. And the tackle on Torrey Smith is made by Ike Taylor as we take a look at that Pittsburgh defense. Cameron Hayward, the Ohio State University. Ziggy Hood, Missouri. Jason Worlds. Lunch Pell defense. Lawrence Timmons, Florida State. Troy Polamalu, University of Southern California. Jarvis Jones, Georgia. IT Swag University. William Gay, Louisville. Will Allen, the Ohio State University. Ryan Clark, LSU. Cortez Allen, the Citadel. Like the Ravens, a lot of changes with Pittsburgh. No James Harrison, no Casey Hampton from last year. And on second down, there goes Flacco deep again, and it's caught by Smith for the touchdown. 55 yards. So he underthrows Jones on his first bomb. They may have marked him a little short. The crowd thinks he's into the end zone, and now they're going to mark the ball at the one yard line. Cortez Allen makes the tackle. Take a look. The safety in the middle of the field, I believe it's Will Allen, comes up underneath this route, and Ike Taylor, who has been seeing a lot of receivers the last couple of weeks go by him. And they just take shots down the field. It's the exact same way they played the game last week and just came up with a lot of big plays. And now the ball down to the one. One official came in to signal touchdown. Now this is a score, not a scoring play, so you'd have to challenge it. If Harbaugh wanted to, he could challenge that it was a touchdown. But instead, he takes his chances on a first and goal. And this is Ray Rice who won't get there, so it's going to be second down and goal. Well, I tell you, Joe Flacco, this is sort of the opposite of what we see around the National Football League with the Baltimore Ravens. So many teams around the NFL now are throwing those little, short, quick passes all over the field and the quick screens, and you'll see a lot of that from Pittsburgh tonight. And Joe Flacco and the Ravens, almost the opposite. They just take it and throw it deep and take their chances. Five minutes into the game, play action. Flacco dancing, and he's going to get sacked back at the seven-yard line. Jason Worlds is there but he's really come on he's playing extremely well of late and that's going to make it third down and goal 
One of the things that they do in protection with Ray Rice is they expect him to be able to double read here and here. And sometimes it gets him in trouble. That time, Jason Worlds just beat him around the edge. So that first down and goal from the one all of a sudden doesn't look so good. Now they split Rice wide to the right. Empty the backfield. They go five wide on the third and goal. Flacco hangs in, throws, caught, touchdown, Torrey Smith. And this time it counts for sure. So Torrey Smith, who looked as if he was in the first time, spotted inside the one. Harbaugh can smile right now. Otherwise, he would have questioned whether he should have challenged that spot inside the one. But it's all academic at the moment. Touchdown. Well, Ike Taylor is going to be upset with this one because you see him waving his arms. He started inside, jumped to the outside, basically telling Torrey Smith, here, you get a free release to the inside because I have help in there. The help did not help, and they got a touchdown. Justin Tucker for the point after. So the Ravens' first drive, 71 yards, eight plays on a third down to Smith for the TD. 7-0 Baltimore. Mouth's watering a little bit now. We, we love being out on Thanksgiving night, doing the games and all that, but you do miss that turkey. Yeah, though. we were stuck with Brussels sprouts, but what are you going to do? Okay. <laughs> so here we are in Baltimore on Thanksgiving night, seven to nothing. The Ravens on top. The Ravens in this series, the team that scores first is 27 and eight. Kick is fielded in the end zone as Justin Tucker kicks to Emmanuel Sanders and Sanders brings it back to the 21 yard line before losing his helmet. Ben goes back to work on Pittsburgh's second drive when we come back. I'm here with store manager Petra. Hi. If you thought Black Friday was over, there's more. This Friday, your local manager has great savings at your Walmart. Christmas trees, fresh cut and artificial, fresh wreaths, and Christmas light sets, all 30% off. All these Barbie fashion dolls and accessories, 30% off. All these Lego construction sets, 30% off. It's the first ever manager specials event going on this Friday from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. only at Walmart. Thrusters at 30%. I can't get it to work. Losing thrusters. I need more power. Give me more power! Located GE Deep Sea Fuel Technology, a 50,000 pound ingeniously wired machine that optimizes raw data to help safely discover and maximize resources in extreme conditions. Our current situation seems rather extreme. Why can't we maximize Ready. Brilliant. Let's get out of here. Warp speed. This is smooth and precise on-road handling. This is easy to use off-road capability when you need it. This is 70 and counting safety and security features. This is total confidence and comfort. In the middle of crowds or in the middle of nowhere. This is the freedom to keep chasing all the horizons you want. Introducing the all-new 2014 Jeep Cherokee. We make the most popular mall Santa in Pittsburgh. We make thousands of things that are more than just things. NFLshop.com. For the complete viewing experience, check out NBC Sports Live Extra on NBCSports.com. And to celebrate Thanksgiving, let us know what you're thankful for on social media and why I'm thankful. Log on right there. A lot of good stuff on that site. The Baltimore Ravens. Leading seven to nothing, ball at the 21 yard line. Pittsburgh with a three and out on their first series, all three running plays. Keep it on the ground again. This is Bell. Who they expect to develop into something very special. Let's take a look at the Baltimore defense. Arthur Jones, Syracuse University. Paul Tingata, Oregon. Chris Canty, Wahoo Wah. Cornell Shaw, University of Alabama. Daryl Smith. Georgia Tech. Jamil McClain, Syracuse. Hacksaw, Ball So Hard University. Ladarius Webb, Nickel State. James Zietero, University of Massachusetts. Matt Elam, DeWire High School. Jimmy Smith, University of Colorado. First time these teams met, Pittsburgh was able to run the ball with great effectiveness, a lot of heavy packages. 
They've started that way tonight with four runs. And now you can make it five as they stick into that same plan. Le'Veon Bell, and it's been a couple of years since Pittsburgh's had a real bell cow. Don't slap me there for saying know. that, but you know what I'm, where I'm going with that. Second round pick out of Michigan State. He was hurt at the beginning of the season, had 93 yards rushing against the Ravens back in week seven, and he is going to be their guy. Mike Tomlin loves him, and they think he can develop into something extremely special. We'll see. Third and five from the 25. And Roethlisberger ready to throw his first pass of the night. And it's over the middle, and it's caught. And getting away is Antonio Brown, who leads the league in receptions. That is his 81st of the season. He was able to spin away from Lardarius Webb and move the chains. Well, just coming right across the formation, but uh, you hit on it, Al. Antonio Brown now leads the NFL in receptions. He's had a monster year. Mike Wallace, of course, goes off for huge money to the Miami Dolphins. And for Antonio Brown, it was up to him to fill that void. Now we get a little Wildcat going for the Pittsburgh Steelers, or snap. not. Well, maybe. Here comes, <laughs> it looked like Bell was going to take the snap. Wildcat has been a subject of a lot of talk in Baltimore on the other side. Meanwhile, that's tipped and incomplete. So Roethlisberger had flanked out, then came in. Chris Canty is able to knock it down at 6-7. And that'll make it second down. I'll tell you, Ben Roethlisberger's lucky. That ball tipped straight up in the air. Watch Canty. He's not even rushing. He's just playing the, wherever the passing lane is. And somehow that thing fell right in the middle of about six guys. Ravens used a lot of Wildcat last week on the other side. And as you look at Suggs. With his sights set on Roethlisberger, and the first wildcat of the night is employed by the Steelers in this one. He spins around, he throws it to the outside to Emmanuel Sanders, but Sanders gets taken down at the 35-yard line by Corey Graham. Todd Haley, in his second year as the Pittsburgh offensive coordinator, how many stories have been written about he and Ben and you know Todd is saying, hey, "Come on, it, it is so overdone, it is so ridiculous." What do you think? Um, I think they do all right. <laughs> I don't think he's Bruce Arians in the minds of uh, Ben Roethlisberger, who was his dear friend and had a vacation home together or somewhere close in Georgia, but uh, they do all right. Haley needs a timeout after those comments. We'll be back. Hi, I'm Dan Rooney. I'd like to thank God for our many blessings and ask him to bring world peace. Hi, I'm Art Rooney. I'd like to wish our many fans around the world a happy Thanksgiving as well as our service men and women around the world. One of the founding families, and there they are, and the, the young fella to the left of your screen is Art's son, Dan, and Dan's grandson is the former ambassador to Ireland who's given up that post back in the States full time and here tonight. And we've got our first flag of the game. He was jumping offside from the left side of the defensive line as Emmanuel Sanders can't hold on and gets hurt on the play. Elvis Doomerville was jumping offside. It gave Pittsburgh a free play. Here's Cleet Blakeman. Offside. Defense number 58 in the neutral zone at the snap. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Boy, this hurts on every level. You get Sanders hurt, but this is a freebie for an NFL receiver. You get the offsides penalty, so Ben rightly takes his shot, and that is an easy catch. That is not exactly a diving layout. That's one he's going to make, but he smacked his head on the ground, I think. You saw it sort of whip down. And I can tell you, most of the tough concussion-like symptoms I had as a player were from exactly that, your head somehow whipping onto the hard turf, and you could see it took its toll. Well, they're going to bring Marcus Wheaton into the game to take his spot. He's a rookie, number 11, out of Oregon State, third round draft choice. It's third and two. Ben a little shovel pass, and that is caught by Jericho Cottery having a great season. Been around a long time, 10 years 
A lot of those with the Jets, but he scored seven touchdowns this year. He's become like a second security blanket after Heath Miller for Ben. Like this play call. Watch Elvis Doomerville. He sees Ben coming out, and he has to respect that. Dump it down to Gautry underneath. Clever play. At the 46, Pittsburgh going no huddle, something they've been using with great effectiveness in recent weeks. Which helped turn their season around after they'd started 0 4 in September. And Ben will dump this down underneath, and the checkoff man is Bell, and you can see five Ravens all dressed in black tonight. Men in black taking care of him ahead of is the first to hit him. Second and nine. Now, one of the matchups we'll watch tonight Kelvin Beecham, the left tackle, a guy who really has had to sort of fill in, took over for Mike Adams, and Terrell Suggs is the guy he's going to have to try and slow down in this no huddle. They hope that at the very least the no huddle can begin to wear down some of these pass rushers because two of the very best on the Baltimore Ravens between Doomerville and Suggs. Good news for the Steelers as Sanders checks back in. They're commissioned just a couple of plays at second down and nine. Blitz coming again. Roethlisberger gets it away and that's caught by Heath Miller to the 41 yard line goes the venerable tight end Heath Miller in his ninth season in the league he was their number one draft choice back in 05 and you know he, a lot like Jason Witten I mean he's always there. Yeah and, and he's such a big part of it you know he's coming off the knee injury last year and he just seems to be getting a little healthier each week their MVP he was the best player and you know Ben loves throwing to him. Four minutes left in the quarter. The Ravens have had the ball once and lead seven to nothing. And squirting through was Bell. Nothing there initially. Then he was able to turn no gain into a gain of about four. Second and six. Take a look at this. The Ravens defense through week 12. First in sacks. Second best in third down conversions. First in red zone defense. And seventh. And points allowed. And this is a team. No Lewis, no Reed, no Kruger, no Ellerby getting rid of a lot of guys. And seven touchdowns they gave up on opening night against Denver and Peyton Manning. They got well in a hurry. Since then, only 10 passing touchdowns in the ensuing 10 games after that nightmare in the Rockies. And Roethlisberger going deep and incomplete. Good tight coverage on Antonio Brown by Corey Graham, who had two interceptions against the Jets three days ago. Good read by Ben. You got the one-on-one -on -one coverage. And Antonio Brown at the end of this route, watch him. He kind of slows down to try and pin Graham in. I think if he just kept running, it would have hit him right in the hands. See him kind of slow down and tried to create a little space for him to go catch that ball. If he just runs underneath it, I think he has a touchdown. Crowd in full voice on the third and six. From the 38 yard line. Showing blitz. Here they come. And then slings it incomplete to the outside. Intended for Jericho Contrary. James ahead of all on the safety blitz. Fourth down. Well, Daryl Smith came to the outside, but Ben should have stayed put here. He comes out here. And I think he would have been blocked because Le'Veon Bell did a good job picking up the safety blitz. He had time, but I think that pressure flashed in his face and made him feel like he had to bail out of there. Matt McBriar picked up uh, about a month ago. Ladarius Webb back to receive. McBriar, long-time Dallas Cowboy kicker. And that one will bounce at the five and be down at about the ten-yard line. Flacco and company go to work from that spot. Three minutes from in the opening quarter on Thanksgiving night. 7 nothing Ravens. Tonight's show coming up. Uh, some of the guests will include the voices Christina Aguilera on the Tonight Show. Baltimore, Inner Harbor. Laid it up on Thanksgiving night. Bernard Pierce is now in as the running back, and he takes it. And Pierce up to the 14-yard line. Well, Joe Flacco, here we go again. A little pushy shovey. As was the case after uh, the second or third play of the game. 
got new players in this rivalry, but the same result. Yes. It's a tradition like no other. <laughs> More than 20 yards from the line of scrimmage. Last year, Flacco, nine touchdown passes. And then in postseason, he was spectacular on their run to the Lombardi Trophy with five touchdown passes. This year, in 57, only one touchdown pass on a pass more than 20 yards from scrimmage. That was last week. But tonight, he came within a yard of doing it again with Jacoby Jones making the catch. And this was... Well, there it was. The big throw down to Torrey Smith to get him in line for the first touchdown. Looked awfully close to a touchdown there, too, didn't it? Oh, yeah. But this has been an interesting year. They've almost had to throw deep because of some of the losses of his possession receivers. Dennis Pitta and Anquan Bolden and even Ray Rice hasn't been held. Third and one, and they get the ball to Pierce. And he fights his way for a first down. But this is a, the Baltimore running offense this year. It's amazing when you look at it. The league average is always around four. This year it's 4.2 per rush. But the Ravens, Rice is averaging 2.9. There is Ray. Pierce is averaging 2.7. The team is under three as well. And the 27th in rushing yards per game. And next to last, only Jacksonville is worse in yards per carry. And off from the pistol, Pierce. The minute you start talking about no run the game, the guy breaks off uh, about an 11 yard scamper. Well, you know, there's a lot of things different uh, on this team. Michael Orr over here on the right hand side making that block, but no Bryant McKinney. They trade for Eugene Monroe. Here he is over here. And Kalecio Simley, their outstanding guard, who were all big parts of that playoff run last year, no longer here or hurt. From the 34, and that's dropped. Torrey Smith cutting to the outside, running an out route. Second down and 10 with 48 seconds remaining. And there is Dick LeBeau, the great Dick LeBeau at the age of 76, 55th consecutive season as a player or coach in the Hall of Fame. Was a great defensive back, primarily with Detroit. 14 games on Thanksgiving Day with the Lions. Yep. It's a good call on a night like tonight, 37 degrees, Alaska, Alaska, and on second and 10, here's Pierce, out to the 39-yard line, he goes, tackled by Cameron Hayward in the, our third scrum of the evening, and not the last. Got a split decision going so far, but... These teams understand exactly what this game is about. I mean, this is almost an elimination game, not truly. But Torrey Smith and Ike Taylor on the outside going at it, a little holding going on, and then a little of that and a little of that. You know, wide receivers are pretty uh, rough and tumble guys, Al. You know, uh, excuse me? Yeah, they like to sort of stir that stuff up and then look for linemen to help. Oh, I got you. Baltimore takes a timeout, and the, the, well, the quarter time comes to an end. And they got the timeout before the end of the quarter. It's going to be third and five when we come back. Tonight's aerial coverage is being brought to you by Geico. High above downtown Baltimore, m and Bank Stadium near downtown. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth. Michelle Tafoya, happy Thanksgiving. Hope it's been a great day for you. This is pretty tasty dessert we have. Second quarter will start before the Baltimore timeout. The clock had expired, so you had the end of the quarter, not charged with the timeout. We start with the third and five, and it's a first down as the pass is caught here by Brandon Stokely, his second grab of the night, and that takes the ball to the 41 yard line. Well, we've seen Brandon Stokely over the years, not a young man by any means, a little bit of that in and out route. You see some Wes Welkers of the world doing this kind of thing. But guys that can move the chains on third down and five are always going to be valuable no matter how old they are. Stokely at 37 is the oldest wide receiver in the league. Rice is back in as the running back out of the pistol. And they'll give it to him. Ray looking for room. 
to the 41. Rice got hurt second game of the season. Said it's the first time he's really been hurt. Hip injury and said he just didn't feel right until the end of October. Well, if you saw the play, he kind of went down in a heap. He wasn't even hit. Just handed the ball, was going around the right side and just went down. He thought he broke his hip. He went off to the sideline and goes, guys, I think I broke my hip. And he said, believe it, you wouldn't be walking if you broke your hip. And he, He's never pulled a muscle in his life. I, I couldn't believe it when he was telling us that. I've never heard of a football player say that. Second and eight, and the pass is incomplete. Cutting across was the tight end, Ed Dixon. They're still minus Dennis Pitt. I hope to have him back when they play a week from Sunday. And it will be third down and eight. You want Torrey Smith went to the Baltimore sideline holding his hand. Yeah, and you know the Ravens are going more and more to this no huddle as well. They they really want Joe Flacco to begin to do a little of what Peyton Manning and Tom Brady have done. Read the defense, make the right call, and let him go. Flacco on third and eight. Hangs in the pocket. That pass is incomplete. Trying to get it underneath to Brandon Stokely. And in comes the punting unit. As they work on the hand or arm of or wrist of Torrey Smith on the sideline. So much the big play threat. Of course, now it helps a little bit to have Jacoby Jones back in action. So you get that balance effect on both sides of the ball. But here's one of the more exciting young players in the league. This Antonio Brown. His dad's in the Arena League Hall of Fame. Touchdown, Eddie Brown. And Antonio's been lighting it up. And Sam Cook. Trying to pin him inside the 20, and he does at the 15 yard line. Brown makes the fair catch. Early second quarter, 7 to nothing, Baltimore. Why I'm thankful. I'm thankful for my wonderful family and the fact that I get a chance to play this great game. I'm so thankful for my family, friends, loved ones, uh, this great country we get to live in, the sport I get to play and obviously Steeler Nation. Ben Roethlisberger, part of that great draft class of 2004 with Eli Manning, Phillip Rivers, Flacco, of course, uh, that uh, 2008 class and has been the starter for Baltimore since day one. So Roethlisberger goes to work from the 15. Pittsburgh trailing 7 to nothing. And Ben on a roll and looking downfield and finds his man, Antonio Brown, for a gain of 12 and we've mentioned before Chris a lot of the success that Pittsburgh had came when they began to go no huddle in October because September was a total disaster for this team. Yeah and, and you know he's now calling about 99 percent of the plays when they do get in the no huddle. He's even asked Todd Haley to not talk so much in his headset because he wants a little chance to think about what he's doing out there but like a lot of quarterbacks now they want a chance to see the defense they're the last one to get a look at it and make the calls and make the adjustments from the 21 pass is taken for a gain of five by Emmanuel Sanders and you know you would think any co any quarterback in his 10th year in the league he wants to call his own plays he wants to go no head of whatever he wants not just for a change of pace yeah. you, ever, you never heard a quarterback in his 10th year who didn't want to no, do that I never heard of it at all you know Terry Bradshaw used to call their own plays, but how long do you say, how hard could it be? You only had four of them. So, you know, I mean, that's the way it was. But it is it, because he is the one that, that knows what the defense is. He doesn't have to guess what it is to make the play call. Here's the Wildcat now, and the snap is a direct snap to Bell. And the rookie running back takes the ball up to the 37-yard line. There's a little bit of the sign of the power of Le'Veon Bell on that one. 240 plus pound running back that they love in Pittsburgh. Kind of went nowhere but really needed this final effort to pick up the first down. David DeCastro who's really been looking so much better lately. The right guard pulling around to lead the way. DeCastro hurt last year. He was a number one pick in the 2012 draft out of Stanford. From the 37 yard line. This will be Bell's eighth carry. But they've done a nice job bottling him up. That time Arthur Jones, the fourth year in from Syracuse, pulls him down. Eight carries, 21 yards. September was a, a total disaster. The Steelers did not have a single takeaway in four games, and they had 11 turnovers. 
They were 0 4 and it included a trip to London where they lost to Minnesota. But since then, you can see the difference, especially with Ben. Second and ten from the 37. Under pressure. Off he goes. And Roethlisberger trying to get that first down, and he will. Goes right to the marker before he gets out of bounds. It'll be a first down for Pittsburgh. Nice job here. You're starting to see the Steelers now do a much better job of understanding where the pressure is coming from. Remember, they lost their signal caller, Marquise Pouncey, about eight plays into the season. So all their plans of going to the no huddle basically went out the window, and they've been redeveloping. Fernando Velasco, I don't know where this team would be without him, was cut by the Titans. He had started 16 games the year before for them, so he was a veteran just learning the system. But now that they are starting to get on the same page, this offense is playing much better. Mike Tomlin said we had a microwave in before we gave him, <laughs> before we cooked him completely. And that's incomplete pass thrown over the middle. And right in that middle was uh, Smith. It was Doomerville put the pressure on Doomerville coming over from the Broncos after that uh, contract fax machine snap. Well, that was Doomerville right out here, just too quick on the outside for Mike Adams. But Ben Roethlisberger completely misses this throw. I think it was Emmanuel Sanders wide open in the middle of the field. He kind of took a step up and just threw it right in the dirt. That's one of Ben's strong points there, making those throws on the move. Completely missed that. One. Second and ten. He moves Miller around and he tries to provide leverage of a block by Miller. Pernell McPhee makes the tackle on Le'Veon Bell. And it'll make a third down and nine. And Suggs needs. A breather on this frigid night, and that's why McPhee was in the game, making that last tackle. Third and nine. Break up that punch formation by sending Sanders to the left. Shoulder shake, Ben stays alive and hits Sanders over the middle as he does so often and has done for 10 years. Ben Roethlisberger extending the play, staying alive, tough to get down, even though he's been sacked a ton of times, but we've seen him do this a million times. You know, his ability for a guy that weighs 250 pounds or whatever it is, turn his shoulder, slide up, keep his head downfield, and just flip it. I mean, that's not, that's not like a 90-mile-an-hour fastball. They watch this. He just kind of flips it down there to him and... Sanders goes up and makes the play, but that's when you know the Steelers are getting right, when Ben Roethlisberger starts to make those kind of plays. That was good for 15 yards. Uh, and an action from the left side. DeCastro may have moved. Cleet Blakeman. Ball start. Offense, number 66. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Tis the call. Mike Tomlin, well, you, you have two of the very best young coaches in the league. I mean, they've been around. I mean, <laughs> Mike in his seventh season, and Harbaugh here since 08. And so many owners in the past couple of years, when they were looking for a change, would kind of say, hey, can you find me the next Mike Tomlin or John Harbaugh? They're still looking, too. Right. First and 15. Dump it off to Bell. And Bell was a good, tough running before he is forced out of bounds. Well, one of the featured attractions has to be Kelvin Beecham, a young man that had to take over. He has played basically everything there is to play along that offensive line. He started the year as a tight end, the extra blocker on the outside, moved to center when Pouncey got hurt, moved to guard when they needed him there, moved to right tackle, now he's playing left tackle. By far the most athletic guy on that offensive line, and that athleticism is paying off for him a little bit in that matchup. Not big, but very athletic. Halfway through the quarter, second down and six. And Roethlisberger guns it incomplete, intended for 
Sanders. It'll be third down and six for the Steelers. I'll tell you, one of the guys that I think's made a huge difference for the Ravens has been Daryl Smith, the linebacker they picked up from Jacksonville. Here's a guy that, you know, you lose Ray Lewis and all that veteran leadership and all the knowledge of this game, and he has simply been sensational this year. I just don't know where they would have been without him. Well, we were talking to John Harbaugh the other day about you know, the guys who have played best for him this year. First name he mentioned, Smith. Well, they are pressure all the way across the board. Five wide go the Steelers. Passes behind Sanders and incomplete. So the drive bogs down. Started back at the, their own 15 yard line. They've run 11 plays on this drive, but still haven't even gotten into field goal range. Yeah, and that was an interesting call there because you really needed a completion of some kind. You know, this 47 yard field goal would have felt a little bit better yeah. than a 50 yarder on this cold night. Well, indeed they have. I said they haven't, but it's a 50 yarder. Clearly meaning something a little bit easier than this. Sean Sweezum's had a terrific year. He's only missed two all season. Back to back in uh, Oakland. And they're going to fake soon. it. And Sweezum is going to try to run around to the right side. And he'll go down. He left before the ball was down. He did. Trying to kick it before it was down. Big break for Baltimore. They get it in this field when we come back. So Sean Sweezum starts to move forward before Matt McBriar is able to, to get the snap. Here's what happens. It's just he knows there's no chance he can kick it, and then he just tries to get the ball and go run with it. It was interesting. The Ravens only had nine guys on the field in defense, and luckily we were able to stop him. Of course, Sweezum not exactly a great run for it. No, so the ball at the 44, Baltimore takes it there. Rice goes to the outside. And moves it to the 47-yard line, and we check with Michelle. Al, Steelers defensive end Brett Kiesel is questionable with a left foot injury. Same foot that's kept him out of the last two games. Meanwhile, Ravens wide receiver Brandon Stokely is questionable with a left knee. He went back to the locker room with Dr. Leanne Curl for further evaluation. All right, thank you, Michelle. As Torrey Smith does come back in after working on his hand for a while on the sideline, second down and seven. And the pass is incomplete. Intended for Jacoby Jones, and he is slow in getting up. Hit by Cortez Allen, and he will come limping off Will Jones. One of the really good young players in this league right now is Jarvis Jones. Getting a chance to play here, but they think athletically and mentally now, he is so much further ahead than most of the defensive ends. And oh my goodness, this is a story. You already got Torrey Smith limping around or with the bad wrist, whatever happened to him. Hey! Tandon Doss now in the game. He's in motion. Works out of the slot. Flacco's going to go deep down the left sideline and incomplete, but a flag is thrown for interference on Ike Taylor. Torrey Smith down the sideline, reaching back up for it and draws the flag. Well, whether it's Josh Gordon or Calvin Johnson, teams are now targeting Ike Taylor. Pass interference, defense, number 24. The ball in place with the spot of foul, automatic first down. Sometimes that do happen when you're in your 11th year in the league. Yeah, this is a veteran, to say the least, defense, you can see, but Ike sort of hooked that arm. It's one thing to do a little contact, but you can see he hooked it into his body. Good call by the officials. 26-yard penalty puts the Ravens at the 27-yard line. Right. You know, Chris, we checked with the league. It's interesting. She brought it up during the commercial break. When Sweezum moved forward before the ball was down, you could have called a false start on the kicker, but it's something that uh, Dean Blandino, the head of officiating, said he's never seen, but you could have called it. Yeah, we might have to call John Madden on that one. <laughs> so, you know, you see everything, but I've never seen the kicker in illegal motion. Second down and eight, the ball is at the 25-yard line. A little more than six minutes remaining in the half. Flacco, play action, and incomplete again as Ike Taylor is there. Taylor that time able to swatted away from the grasp of Smith third and eight 
Well, this is pretty well done by Ike Taylor. And talking to Dick LeBeau about Ike, I said, how's he hanging in there? Because it's been a rough couple of weeks for him. He said, it's a great thing about Ike Taylor. He said, you would never know it. He could give up touchdown passes all day long. He'd line up on the next one, and he would just feel like, I'm going to win this one. He, he always takes the best receiver the other team has, and sometimes that's a tough assignment. He goes, he goes back to Jerry Rice. Third and eight. Here goes Flacco is going to take off and get the first down. Joe Flacco not sliding, knew he needed the first. Finally tackled by Jarvis Jones and moves the chains on a third and eight. Well, let's give some credit to Michael Orr on the outside here. Just barely held off Jason Worlds. And Joe Flacco said, you know, we've been struggling to run the football, so I almost feel like this season I have to do it myself a little more often. I don't like to run. But when necessary and in key situations, I will. That was huge there. He's had six third down runs this season, all for first downs. And he's averaged over five yards a carry when the other guys are averaging less than three. Offense, number 68, five-yard penalty, still first down. A.Q. Shipley. Jacoby Jones has come back into the game. There he is. Boy, what a playoff run he had, huh? Great Ooh. Super Bowl game, caught the pass against Denver, and... Probably the play of the year, wouldn't you say? That pass, 40-something seconds to go, and looked like the Ravens were going to be one and done, and 70 yards later, here we go. Help Flacco uh, back up the truck for the bank yeah. <laughs> to the 21-yard line. Here's Ray Rice. We won't tell you who it is, but one of the Steelers we met with last night, uh, he said uh, he called somebody Mr. 120. We went... What? And we thought for a second, $120 million. He did. We, we can't give him up, but he's clearly on the defense. Yeah, he's like, you know, 120. I don't know what he's thinking about there. We got to... Well, maybe it was Ryan Clark, but we, we can't quite remember. Yeah. Monday, Monday. He's a funny guy. Very funny. We gave him up. Mr. 120, second and 14. Look out. Pressure. And he's going to lose the ball. It's a strip sack. Ball is loose at the 29 yard line, but recovered as Jason Worlds came in, but Baltimore is going to retain possession. So, strip sack by number 93. The development of young pass rushers. Watch his hands here. Just smack the hands of Michael Orr right off of him. And Michael Orr now is in a very interesting situation. Because of the trade of Eugene Monroe, both of those guys will need contracts. I doubt very seriously they both get it. And my guess is that Eugene Moreau is going to get the deal and Orr will not. He may be somewhere else next year. He did not play well last week. Third down and 23. Second sack for Walls in the game tonight. And now Rice will chug his way to the 25 to make it a little easier for Justin Tucker on the field goal attempt upcoming. Will Allen making the stop. Well, maybe we'll see the holder go in motion this time. <laughs> Well, that was a good stand, though, after you give up the long pass interference call. You hold Baltimore to field goals. That's better, especially because Ben got the offense moving at least a little bit in that last drive. 22 straight successes for Tucker. This one will be a 43-yard attempt. Sam Cook to put it down. And Tucker's boot is through. 301 remaining in the opening half, but Baltimore now leads 10 to nothing over Pittsburgh. Well, there's a fun and easy way for you to hop on the NFL Play 60 bus to get on board and join the movement to help children get active and healthy. Visit NFLRush.com slash Play 60. A lot of kids uh, here tonight, some of the Play 60 group before the game on this Thanksgiving evening in Baltimore. Maryland. So the Pittsburgh Steelers down that 10 to nothing with 301 to play in the opening half. The Steelers have had two long drives, but neither has resulted in points. Their last two drives won 11 plays and then with a punt, 12 plays ended with the botched field goal attempt. Giant and Dwyer will run this kickoff back and Bangs his way out to the 28-yard line. So Rocklisberger trying to put some points up on the scoreboard in Baltimore when we come back. Wow, it's only about 10 weeks away now. February 6th, the world's greatest athletes come together for the Sochi Olympic Winter Games. It all begins February the 6th right here on NBC. 
frozen water there as you look at Baltimore, but a guy who uh, knows what the little normal water is like is uh, the most decorated American Olympian ever. Michael Phelps right there. Lives here in Baltimore. Mom Debbie. Looking wow. out on this cold night. Do some interviews with Debbie. She was fun to be around at the Olympics. A little bit nervous over there, but sure. uh, she had fun. Uh, celebrating though. A swing pass to the outside taken by Brown, but he can't get on track. Jimmy Smith coming up from the right corner to make the tackle after a gain of two yards. Pittsburgh offense, so a three play drive to open things out, three and out. And then an 11 play drive resulting in a punt. The 12 play drive resulted in the botched field goal attempt. So we've had the ball a lot, but it's resulted in nothing. Felix Jones, the former Cowboy, is now in the backfield. Second and eight. And that pass is incomplete, intended for Brown over the middle. It'll be third down and eight, and Roethlisberger at the current moment is 10 for 17 for 71 yards. Well, Josh Bynes that time, one of their inside backers over here, falling back underneath that. So far, the Ravens have been doing a look where they are they are putting three or four guys to the outside right, three guys to the outside left, and sort of leaving the middle of the field, almost daring them to try and call runs. Jonathan Dwyer flanks Roethlisberger on a third and eight. And then throws. That's caught by Sanders, who tries to back his way to a first down. But the line judge comes in to spot it about a half yard shy. And we go to the two-minute warning, and Elvis Doomerville is the injured Baltimore Raven. It'll be fourth and one at the two-minute warning when we come back to Baltimore. Third of halftime coming up. The Cowboys come back to knock off Oakland. Lions get 37 unanswered points. Aaron Rodgers can't get back fast enough for Green Bay. Bob and Hines breaking down the first half ball on the Toyota halftime. So we cruise through the inner harbor of Baltimore, fourth and one. Matt McBriar will punt, and Jacoby Jones sets up at his own 12 yard line for the Ravens. It's a line drive, low bouncing kick. It takes a nice Pittsburgh hop, and out of bounds it goes at the 15-yard line. 150 to the half, 10 to nothing, home team. Sunday Night Football on Thanksgiving night being brought to you by the brilliant minds and machines of GE. By Toyota Care. By the new windows, one experience for everything in your life, and by The Hobbit, the desolation of Smaug, in theaters everywhere, December the 13th. What was that? The death of, no, what? <laughs> <laughs> the death, it's the de desolation of Smaug. Meanwhile, <laughs> it was Plymouth Rock. Not only we show you local shots, but uh, well, Christmas is a coming. Flacco starts with... A pass to Ray Rice. It's, it's broken up as he receives it. Ziggy Hood making the tackle. Ravens have all of their timeouts. Second and nine. Yeah, and depending on how this play goes, Pittsburgh has a couple too. So. Let's see what happens here. Is the pass is caught at the 20-yard line, and it's going to be third and one. Is Dallas Clark, the longtime Colt. Makes it a third and one, and it's one of those situations now where you know, Baltimore coming up to the line, have all of their timeouts. Right, here comes Paul Mahler up the line, too, right? And thrusting ahead is Ray Rice, and now you can start thinking about those timeouts, and they take it right here after a first down. 64 ticks left. So two, two timeouts remaining for Baltimore as you look at Paul Mahler's. Fairly quiet to this point tonight. I haven't called his name. From the 26-yard line, Flacco checks it off. Juggling catch is made by Rice. And he gets tackled up at the 32-yard line by Will Allen. Boy, if Ray Rice starts making some catch-and-run plays again, that has really not been 
around this offense because of his injury. But that has been such a key component of the success of the Ravens over the years. Second and three. They got a full start on the right side. That's Orr backing up. Well, Michael Orr is trying to explain, hey, I know the snap count. I moved on the snap count. Just because I moved ahead of our other offensive lineman, he does do that. He times it up pretty well. I don't know if he did that time or not, but. But he usually is the first offensive lineman to move in the tape I've watched. Right on the end of the line of scrimmage here. You'll, I'd say that's a little before the snap. Yeah, I, I would too. False start. Offense number 74. It's a five-yard penalty. In addition, this situation requires a 10-second runoff. And Baltimore has elected not to take a timeout to save the 10 seconds. So the game clock operator, please put 28 seconds on the game clock. 28. That's a very interesting call right there. I'm not sure I wouldn't have taken the timeout and saved those 10 seconds right there. I don't know what you're going to do with the timeout. Right. The sec second down and eight. Curious decision right there. The pass is caught by Rice. He gets to the 33. Now you're going to take another timeout here. But you only have 17. It's going to tick down. And apparently they're going to be content just to go in with a 10 nothing lead. Or are they? Yeah, I think that's going to be that. Yeah. So that's the way they play it at the end and the crowd doesn't like it. But Harbaugh is content to go in with a 10 point cushion at the half. The Ravens will get the second half takeoff. Into the first half, Baltimore 10, Pittsburgh nothing. The Toyota halftime coming your way next. Sunday night football on Thanksgiving night from Baltimore, Maryland. Ten to nothing is our halftime score. Figured to be a defensive struggle. Figured to be low scoring. And really, there's a one big play is the difference in the game right now. Yeah, the long pass set up the only touchdown so far. Joe Flacco throwing one in there to Torrey Smith. So we'll make it the Burger King inside edge. How about that? We talked about the fact that Ike Taylor sort of set up to the outside, inviting Torrey Smith to the inside because he knew he had help. On the inside, there it is. Brett Kiesel is going to drop underneath, and he's going to be the guy to take away the inside throw. Unfortunately for Kiesel, he's not used to dealing with quarterbacks. Joe Flacco looks him off just far enough, makes him lean a little left, throws it behind him, and there it is. Your Burger King inside edge for the only, touch, only touchdown of the game. Check out more insights from tonight on NBC Sports Live Extra. And of course the big play that I referred to was the 54 yard pass that set that up that was initially ruled a touchdown and then they put the ball back at the one yard line and from there they scored the only touchdown of the game. Rushing yardage, ball over with 47, Pittsburgh only 20. Despite the fact Bills carried the ball nine times tonight. Total yardage 151 to 98 and Pittsburgh's had a little bit more possession time but couple of long drives resulting in no points. Well, be careful with this guy. San Francisco 49ers will tell you all about him. Sean Sweezum had a little adventure in the opening half, jumping the gun on a field goal attempt. We'll send it down to Jacoby Jones. And he'll get to run this back from the one yard line. Jones will dance his way out past the 30 to the 32 yard line as we go to Michelle. Well, I just spoke with Mike Tomlin, who told me he's not overly concerned about his team trailing 10 nothing. He said it's not what they're doing to us. It's our lack of execution. We've got to pay greater attention to detail. They will be without Brett Kiesel, their defensive end, who is out with a left injury now. As for John Harbaugh, he loves what his defense is doing. He wants them to continue to prevent Ben Roethlisberger from stepping up in the pocket and taking shots. Elvis Dumerville, by the way, left ankle sprain, questionable. All right, thank you, Michelle. Keep an eye on him when their defense comes back out. Here's Bernard Pierce. And of course, uh, Harbaugh should be very pleased with that defensive performance. Only 98 yards for Pittsburgh in the opening half. Yeah, and you're starting to get a feel for 
These two teams and the possibility of their getting hot. The winner of this game is going to be very dangerous. No huddle, second and six. The catch is made by Jones. Very big game, obviously, for both teams. Because they come in five and six. The winner's going to get a leg up in the fight for a wild card berth, or maybe even a division title. But if Baltimore were to lose the game, doubly tough, because they then will have lost both games to Pittsburgh, and that would be a huge tiebreaker. Both these teams still have a shot against Cincinnati as well. They do. Bengals will play at San Diego on Sunday afternoon. And here's Pierce to the 48. And just to refresh the standings in the AFC North. And they've tightened up in the past couple of weeks since he is seven and four. Winner of this game is going to go to six and six, and the loser five and seven. And the Browns are four and seven right now. Mike Tomlin pacing the sideline here, second down and eight, exhorting his defense. Here they come. Flacco jostled as he throws, and the pass is incomplete. Cortez Allen with the coverage that time on Jones. Polamalo was blitzing third and eight. Troy Polamalo right here is going to get the immediate pressure, and then it's going to come from behind. Watch a little pirouette here working against Bernard Pierce and Lawrence Timmons and Jason Worlds almost got there. So you get the idea now. Dick LeBeau unwilling to just sit back. He's going to fire a few bullets here in this half. Third and eight, pass is caught. Smith, and Smith starts to stumble. Let's see where they mark his forward progress. Naked eye, it looks to me. Well, it's going to be right on the line, so it should be a first down. And as they take a look at the sideline, goes down just at the 44-yard line. I'm going to measure i tell you, that's pretty close. When that knee went yeah. down, they're getting a pretty good spot out of that one. Very good spot, and you can tell Tomlin hates that spot. He's right there. He can see it, and it looks like it's going to be a first down. Yeah, it's interesting. Where was he touched? To go down is one thing, and to be touched when you're down is the other. Right. Now, that was a third and eight. So a critical spot on a third down play. Blakeman chain gang coming in. Of course, Tomlin could challenge this spot. It's going to be a first down. And does Mike want to challenge it and maybe lose it, lose a second half timeout? You take a look. Knee is down. There's the ball. The official sticks are actually on the near side as you look at it. You saw those sticks there on the far side. The official sticks are on the near side. Tomlin's still pacing, still upset, but he's not going to challenge. I agree with him. Yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah. I, I don't think you win that challenge. Even if you do, they probably go for it on board there. Yep. Blacko swings it to the outside. Brown off a pick. And Marlon Brown makes his first catch of the night. And that is good for a first down. Rookie out of Georgia. Well, throwing the Steelers screen right back at him here. Everybody's coming this way and kicking it out. And Marlon Brown has really stepped up. I remember watching this young man playing against Carolina in preseason, having a huge game. He had monster games in the preseason. And more and more now, you really get the feeling that he's going to be a factor coming down the stretch for them. Brown with five touchdown catches this season. His rookie campaign. Flacco at the 33-yard line. Double team Palomalo on the blitz. Caught by Bernard Pierce, tackled by Timmons after a short game. Well, Eugene Monroe, we talked about him, came over from Jacksonville right here working against the young Phenom and Jarvis Jones, who they are so high on. They think that his potential is just unlimited. Here goes Pierce. He gets stuffed behind the line of scrimmage. You know, it really is amazing, isn't it, to watch Baltimore try and run the football after all those years? And Ray Rice and Bernard Pierce uh, seem like they averaged up close to five yards per carry, but totally different team. I, without Kelechi Osimile, who ended up having a back injury that they didn't even really know about. They just know his play was down. They 
went in and got him looked at, and they said he has to have immediate surgery. He's in danger. He was a force over there. Um, you know, this is, just has not been the same offensive line. It's almost impossible to average less than three yards per rush. Flacco escapes, gets it away, and gets the first down on a pass to Torrey Smith. So nice movement. William Gay came in on a corner blitz. The Flacco was able to see it. Move those shoulders, get away, gets the pass away, moves the chains. Come with a corner blitz, and one of the problems is if it doesn't get there, because Dick LeBeau likes to play those zone defenses in behind the blitz, that time he went right across the formation to where the blitzer was, nobody home. Frank Rice, wide left. Give it to Rice, and Rice through the middle, and Rice takes the ball to the 11-yard line. Tackled by Ryan Clark, and Rice, who's had such a tough time getting anything this year, has his longest game of the night. Well, that was nice. A little trap for Marshall Yonder going to come right over here and kick out, and Rice is just going to shoot right through that tiny little gap. And tell you, with the way this team can throw the ball deep, you give them even a little bit of a running game. They could be a force here in the last quarter of the season. Second down and one. And it's a high snap and a flag. Michael There's a Orr flag moved. on the field. We know that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Three in the booth. That's right. I'm used to that. False start. Offense. Right tackle. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Makes it second down and six. Rice from 8 through 12, 4.5 per carry. Pierce, 4.9. This was a, a big-time one-two punch in their numbers right now. With Pierce picking up a tenth tonight. Went from 2-7 to 2-8. Second and six. And it's thrown and incomplete as it was Torrey Smith stopping, turning around, and Ike Taylor right there with him. Third down. Well, every time the free safety goes to the middle of the field and it's one on one on the outside, Joe Flacco goes right there. That's his guy. But Ike Taylor now, that's two in a row he's made a big play on. And so now it's a huge third down. <laughs> See, Mike Tomlin saying, I told you. Yeah, big time. I told you. He, he just doesn't flinch. You know, you can beat him once or twice, but he doesn't back up. And a touchdown makes this a three possession game in these street balls. That's a big, big lead. And that pass is incomplete. So a big third down stop right there. Ziggy Hood came in and was able to jostle the quarterback as Flacco threw it away. Fourth down. You know, those are plays in the past that Ray Rice just won all those battles. You know, he was a guy that had a way of, of making teams pay when you wanted to play coverage on him one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. He's getting back to form, but he's just not quite there yet. 34-yard attempt for Justin Tucker. Had a great rookie year. Second year on the University of Texas. Cook gets it down. 24 straight field goals for Justin Tucker. And Baltimore's lead is 13-0. Eastern and Pacific, 9 Central and Mountain. Right here on NBC. Edgar Allen Poe. And of course, that's where the... Uh, I mean, Ravens would come from, the Baltimore Ravens coming into existence after leaving Cleveland, beginning a new history here in 1996. Dick LeBeau, 55th year of coaching, consecutive season, coming over the Sharks with his defense. Right now they need something on offense. Very a point to this point in the third quarter as Felix Jones downs it in the end zone. And Roethlisberger will have the ball for the first time in the second half when we come back. Happy Thanksgiving from the Baltimore Rays and the Suggs family. There he is, Terrell Suggs. Such an instrumental part of a couple of Super Bowl teams. 11 years in the NFL played, of course, last year with the Super Bowl champions. Number one draft choice back in 03. 
And a man who sacked Roethlisberger more than anyone else. And the pass is caught and Heath Miller out to the 41 yard line. So the Steelers in dire need of getting something going here down 13 to nothing early in the third. Well part of their success on that one is they are double teaming Suggs on the outside and I tell you Pittsburgh's got a pretty impressive streak going now three straight weeks Mario Williams and Dominic and Sue Phil Taylor of the Browns none of those guys show up on the stat page and so far tonight Suggs has not shown up on the stat page. Four marquee names. And he was the one they were targeting. They did not want him to beat them tonight. Keep it on the ground. And this is Bell. Le'Veon Bell out to the 47 yard line and there is Suggs making the stop. Second down and four. Suggs career against the Steelers 14 and a half sacks plus five in postseason. Three sack fumbles in the regular season. A couple of picks as well. Well, the other thing they were worried about was they think they know the signals. He had an interception on a quick screen once where it truly did look like he knew exactly what the call was and the Steelers were cognizant of that here. Tonight. Second down and four. Squawk by Miller but he's going to get written down at the 49 by Josh Bond. Go back to 2010 for El Suggs. You'll see Ben barking out the audible. Suggs paying attention. Walks out a little bit, takes a stride. Now watch this move. Right up the field, thank you very much. And would have had a walk in if he hadn't stumbled down. Steelers come to the line without a huddle. Third down, two from the 49. And through the middle is a big hole there for Bell. Inside the 40. Bell inside the 20 and then finally written down first and goal. Matt Elam. Rookie number one pick out of Florida rides him down after a gain of 43 yards. A good double team over here on this side as they get a little movement. Just secure Haloti not in. So many times that's the key, but boy, that's the kind of breakout play they've been waiting for from Le'Veon Bell. And once again now, that was his best game of the year was against the Ravens. Maybe he's getting it going again. He had 27 yards total on 10 carries before that point. 43 there. That's the longest run against the Ravens this season. From the eight. Yeah. Incomplete. I'll tell you. The Ravens just make the point, Chris, so good in the red zone defensively. And the Steelers so bad. I mean, right. this has been sort of the nightmare matchup so far this year because the Pittsburgh Steelers Obviously at this point in the game they've got to put a touchdown on the board here But this is what the Ravens do best. So this final eight yards is going to be an uphill grind Spread it out empty the backfield Ravens have allowed only one rushing touchdown all the year That would be week four Fred Jackson Buffalo Second and goal pay attention to Heath Miller in the slot and Jericho Cotry. Those are the two guys Cotry with seven touchdown catches Roethlisberger back it away Finding time, throwing an incomplete. Intended for Cotry and broken up by Jimmy Smith, third and goal. I tell you, you have to give Kelvin Beecham some credit, man. This guy is hanging in here. You know, and Ben's buying some time. Really, you get this kind of time, that kind of protection, he moves around. Usually, Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers score a touchdown out of that. Very impressive that time on the back end by the Ravens. Elvis Dumerville shaking up at the end of the first half is in there now. Suggs, a look at him. Roethlisberger, play clock winding down, third and goal. Brings Sanders to the inside. Ben stepping up, gets it away, and it's caught in the back of the end zone. Roethlisberger extending, hits Emmanuel Sanders to finally get Pittsburgh some points. Nice move in the back of the end zone by Emmanuel Sanders, but that was all Ben Roethlisberger just buying some time. Watch Sanders going to go right down the middle of the field between the hash marks, fake to the outside, back to the inside. Ben sees it. Luckily, nobody flying in. Here's Sanders coming in. 
And really everybody sort of leans that way and then they can't re react late. Daryl Smith fooled just enough by Sanders' huge touchdown for the Steelers. Fourth touchdown reception of the year for Sanders. Squeeze him for the extra point. So they go 80 yards in seven plays, two runs and five passes. 626 remaining in the third. It's now 13-7 Ravens. Short little road trip for us. We're back with you on Sunday night. It'll be the Giants and the Redskins. Meeting up on Sunday night football. It all starts with football night at 7 Eastern time. The storylines, I'd say, going into that game on Sunday night, my man. We'll have a few conversations, Rolling. You would think. Yep. Giants Redskins, Sunday night. 72 hours from now. That's your boy. 69 and a half, but who's counting? It's reasons kickoff. Fielded at the goal line by Jones. Look out. Jacoby Jones gets by Sweezer. And taken down at the 27 yard line. Only Cortez Allen stood between Jones and the goal line. Touchdown saving tackle. What a play by Cortez Allen to give his team a chance. This thing opens up wide open and they've got a blocker in front for Sweezum. They had no chance whatsoever. And Cortez Allen is basically keeping the Steelers in this thing. They take that touchdown off the board with one right back and all the momentum's gone. What a brilliant play by Cortez Allen. I didn't think anybody was going to catch Jacoby Jones. 73 yard run back the ball at the 27 yard line. Play action, Flacco throws, caught to the 11-yard line, goes to the tight end, Ed Dixon. Absolutely love the call right here by Jim Caldwell. Right after the big play, everybody's flying to go get the run. You think you're going to come out, play a little ball control, go right to the bootleg. Very decisive play call. Now comes up in the pistol from the 11-yard line. Give it to Rice. Gain of a couple. Second and eight. Clark and Timmons make a tackle and a uh, little conversation. Yeah, Ryan Clark said take that kind of thing. And this is starting to get a little salty out here right now. Ryan Clark did put a big hit on him. And Rice trying to get back after him. Watch the tail end of that thing. That was a little helmet to helmet shot. Of course, no penalty with the ball carrier just coming through the line of scrimmage. Second and eight. Blanco underneath to Rice, and he can't go anywhere. And that time it's Lawrence Timmons making the tackle. Five minutes to go in the third quarter. Big third and seven upcoming. Side handle only to the five. So they try a couple of runs. Crowd hates that call. Timmons makes the tackle. He's been in on all three last stops, and it's fourth down. Big play here, back to back by Timmons to make the open field tackle and then come back and make that one as well. He has become the defensive signal caller in there when Larry Foote got hurt, and we've got a flag down. Just came down well after the play. I think we've got unsportsmanlike. Cleet Blakeman. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 27. Wow. 15 yard penalty. And it's four. Well, Rice was drawing with Clark, and then he continued that, and that turns a chip shot field goal into something a little bit more. Only matters if you miss, but. Turns a 23 yard field goal attempt into a 38 yard field goal attempt. Justin Tucker. 24 straight. And there's 25. 
to make it a two possession lead again. 349 left in the third. 16 7 Baltimore. Well, last week, Ray Rice over Ravens helped serve over 500 dinners at the Felton Hub Mission Men's Shelter here in Baltimore. Ray Rice, very instrumental in efforts to stop bullying around town. Great story today on the Today Show. And does a lot of good things. Wasn't going to take any bullying on the field in that <laughs> series either. But a big four-point tackle by Cortez Allen. you got to keep that in mind. Here's Justin Tucker's kickoff. This is Sanders out from the goal line. And he's taken down at the 20-yard line by Matt Elam. 343 back to the third. Big game in Baltimore tonight. 16-7 Ravens. Why am I thankful? Uh, I've got a loving wife and, and three children. Uh, obviously, I've been blessed professionally. Uh, I've got a great job. I work with great people on a daily basis. I'm thankful for my wife and my two beautiful children, healthy children, and uh, just being able to uh, live the NFL dream in Baltimore and enjoy the fans and the great teammates and the great memories that I've had playing as a Raven. Well, the crowd was booing as we went to commercial and booing even more after and we're going to show you what happened on that run back by Jones with Mike Tomlin involved along the sideline. They played it back about eight times and even Mike got a, a grin out of it. But first things first it's a first down from the 21 yard line. And a little dump off screen to Bell. And Bell turns it upfield and picks up about seven. So let's go back to that long 73 yard return by Jones. Well, here we go. Here's Tomlin over here. Obviously, Kobe Jones there. And Tomlin is essentially on the field here. And you just wonder, he's trying to get out of the way there. But did that force Jacoby Jones to lean back into the tackle by Cortez Allen? Don't want to in any way say that was something intentional. But if he had picked off the official on that play or touched the player, either way, that's a big penalty. Exactly. And we've seen that happen. A couple of times this year where coaches have been involved in impeding officials along the sideline. So the Dallas Washington game earlier this year. But, but they, can, they can actually, if you impede the runner or come off the sideline and make a tackle or anything bizarre like that, oh, yeah. they can award a touchdown. They can take the ball and say he would have scored a touchdown on that play and award the touchdown. So they played it back about five times, and of course that got the crowd crazy. Up. No harm, no foul, third and three. Meanwhile, Roethlisberger, and this crowd just rises as one. It's full throat on any third down by the opposition. The play clock is down to three. And Roethlisberger throws, and the pass is incomplete, intended for Bell along the far sideline. I tell you, I think Daryl Smith has done more in coverage to help the Ravens than just about any linebacker you see. You go out to San Francisco, they've got great coverage guys as well. But watch this. They're going to try and run a little pick inside, but he just hugs right on to Le'Veon Bell and does not allow Ben Roethlisberger the opportunity. That could have been about a 70-yard play. There was nobody else out there. Here we got the two combatants going as well. <laughs> Tomlin staking his ground along the sideline. Matt McBriar. Jones from the 28. Avoids the first man. And then gets caught from behind after a run back of eight yards. Marcus Wheaton. Making the tackle and back we go to the earlier return by Jacoby Jones. Well, what's bizarre about it is he's looking the other way, but glancing back over his shoulder. But you can see he kind of did force Jacoby Jones back into the field. A little mission accomplished almost. And he's <laughs> snickering. I mean, you know, my man, he's a player now. Mm -hmm. hey! Don't try to get anything by him. A four point play, no matter how you want to slice it. From the 36 yard line, here's Pierce. Pierce up to the 42 yard line. 
tackle by Cameron Hayward, son of the uh, late, uh, not the late, but the Ironhead Hayward, who played uh, running back, of course, for New Orleans. One of the guys that's been causing headaches tonight is Jason World, right in behind there, 93, and so they just double team him here. So go ahead, we're going to make Will Allen come up and make a tackle. Second and four. And this is Pierce, tackled by Polamalu. You know, it's been a little while since I've seen Troy Polamalu play the way that he has. Of course, missed all last year with that cap entry. He's up there playing that linebacker position in the dime defense again. But watch how quickly he closes on the ball when he sees it. That ball's in the air, and he is right there right now. And when he's playing like that, the Steelers are a different defense. Third and four. Good protection up front. Great protection. This Flacco a lot of time. Throws. Caught. Inside the 25-yard line. Jacoby Jones. Tackled by Allen. And what a job by that offensive line. 33 yards. Does this look familiar? Looks like Ben Roethlisberger. Great protection up front. And Flacco just keeps moving, keeps wiggling around until he can finally fire one down the field. That was third down. And once again, when... Jacoby Jones is healthy. He just has a knack for big plays, and Flacco keeps giving him these opportunities, and he keeps making them. I thought his playoff run last year was as good as anything I ever saw. Sensational. That's why they call him Mr. 120. End of the third. 16-7, Baltimore. Sunday Night Football continues after these messages. And tonight's aerial coverage from Baltimore. Being brought to you by Geico. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, and Michelle Tafoya on this Thanksgiving night. MT Bank Stadium, each team five and six. 16 7 Baltimore as we start the final quarter for the first and 10 at the 24 of the Steelers. I haven't seen a lot of the Wildcat tonight out of the Ravens. <laughs> 120 said, no, we don't want any more Wildcat. We yeah. haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. Well, I went to commercial. You saw Jones on the sideline after that long catch and paying a bit of a price as Flacco throws and it's going to be hauled in but out of bounds. And Torrey Smith was there, couldn't even hold on anyway. He was on the chalk and the ball came loose, incomplete, second and ten. Hey, I thought Torrey Smith had this one. It was. Just working one on one on Ike Taylor and of course Torrey with that great speed. This thing was a remarkable throw by Flacco. He was under pressure from two different guys. Polamalu tries to fly back and get underneath it but that one was dropped right in the bucket and dropped period. That was a perfect throw. They came off and then a play stoppage for a full start. Ball start, offense number 74, five yard penalty, still second down. That's another one on, or that's three. Now anytime you end up with Troy Polamalu on your side, you know something's up, and they had the stunt and the loops. And but I will say this, compared to what we saw last week against the Jets, and the Jets have one of the best defensive lines, if not the best, in all of football. But this offensive line is a major step up from what we saw last week. Blacko retreats, sets up the screen, Rice, and bursting through to break up the blocking convoy was William Gay. Stopping him after a gain of two, third and 13 now. Well, William Gay starting to put a couple of good games together now. He had, he was terrific last week in Cleveland and comes up with a play there when they need it most. I mean, they really, this is a no doubter. They have to keep them out of the end zone now. Jones back in the game, flank him wide to the left. Dick LeBeau watching his defense dig in. Third and 13. Four-man rush. Blacko throws high and incomplete. Pass was intended for Dallas Park. 
So it'll be fourth down now, and you'll be looking at about a 45-yard field goal attempt. Well, you don't have to be big to be a good blocker. Watch Ray Rice here. We call this a chip. Yeah, that's, a, that's a big chip on a big guy right there on Jason Worlds. They have turned their attention that way. He's been disruptive. Big block by Rice. Tucker, three for three tonight, 48-34-38. This one 45. And his banner season continues. 13-59 left in regulation. 19-7 Baltimore. You say the quarterback's as old as the rest. <laughs> Number seven is not the biggest guy in the world, but a big heart. Uh, kids playing football on Thanksgiving. Brown, of course, enjoying every moment here to this point, 19 to 7. A minute into the fourth quarter. And the kick is going to go out of bounds and bring it back out to the 40 yard line. So Justin Tucker, of all things, boots one away. Free kick out of bounds. The ball we placed at the 40 yard line. First down, Pittsburgh. Well, you know, we missed our turkey today. <laughs> Your buddy. I, I brought one for you. You know who left this in the booth? I, I do know. I do know. Our good buddy, Dan Deardorff, and we congratulate Dan on a spectacular career, retiring after 30 years of broadcasting. He was in the booth here. Your former partner. Right, on Monday night. And one of the great guys, really. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> he went all out. It's as close as we came to turkey today. <laughs> From the 40 yard line. Roethlisberger begins this drive. And the pass is not caught. It looked like Brown had it and got it ripped away. Jimmy Smith covering on the play. It'll be second down and 10. I'll tell you, one of the guys who's really stepped up this year is Jimmy Smith. He's a tall guy, long arms, and he's been more physical this year than I've ever seen him. Those are plays he just wouldn't make in the past. They just kept encouraging him and encouraging to get more physical, use those long arms, and now that he's doing it, he's been tough to beat. Roethlisberger stepping up to avoid the pressure, sliding left and throws, completes it to Le'Veon Bell to the 46-yard line. And it'll set up a third and four. I can't say enough good things about the left tackle, Kelvin Beecham. I mean, here's a guy nowhere on the radar screen for the Pittsburgh Steelers when the season started. Got his chance because of the injury to Marquise Pouncey. And he's proven that you don't have to be 6'8 and have long arms to play left tackle. He is hanging in there against Suggs. And Baltimore takes a timeout. And let's go to Michelle. Well, guys, I asked uh, Ravens cornerback Jimmy Smith, whom you're talking about, about what makes Ben Roethlisberger difficult to defend. And he said Ben's awareness in the pocket is ridiculous. Someone can have a great sack on him, and he escapes and throws the ball downfield. He's like the king of loose plays right now. That's his strongest point, and that's something you have to try to take away from him. And as we've seen, that's easier said than done. You bet. Thank you, Michelle. As Roethlisberger gets ready to come to the line for... A third and three and again uh, every third down becomes pretty big right now this game the importance of it can't be overstated in terms of the winner's going to be in pretty good shape in terms of a road to the playoffs and the loser is going to be in fairly close to dire straits. Third and three. He's able to convert as Ben hits Emmanuel Sanders across the 50 forward progress to the 49 yard line first down. And just the old Peyton Manning play and it's, it's so hard to stop Tony Dungy here tonight. <laughs> that outside receiver comes and bends to the inside even if you know it's coming sometimes hard to stop and just such a significant drive now for the Steelers. They've got to get this one going. Quick 
toss. Bell. And the rookie running back for a gain of nine yards. Tackled by Suggs. It'll be second down and one. Boy, here's the maturation of a young player, Le'Veon Bell. Come with the slot blitz over here, and he has the presence of mind to know that he's hot. Does not run into who's that Daryl Smith there on the outside. Ben knew exactly. Of course, that helps when your quarterback tells you out there. But that's taken advantage. Five catches tonight for Bell. Also carried 12 times for 70 yards. Had that big 43-yard run. And they give it to Bell. And he slides to the outside and has enough for the first down. Tripped up by McPhee. Maybe on Bell, what a great college career he had. Uh, led the Big Ten, was fifth overall in rushing in the nation, and a big guy, like 245 pounds, so you know he can pass protect. He's proven himself as a good receiver and converting some big third downs. Missed the first three games of the season with a foot injury, so just started to round into shape. Made his NFL debut in the game in London at the end of September. Marcus Berger. First down flag is thrown. Miller makes the catch. Keith Miller is taken down by Darrell Smith, and you saw the flag come in. Holding. Defense, number 21. Five yard penalty. Automatic first down. And that was Lardarius Webb. Now they move Webb back into that slot corner position. And they have improved as a defense since he went in there. You know, a lot of people think that playing cornerback on the outside is the toughest role in this nickel and dime defense. By far, it's playing the slots the toughest. This time you can see Elvis Doomer go with that bad ankle. He did not want to put it in the ground, and Kelvin Beecham taking care of him as well. Eleven minutes left in the fourth. Blitz again. And Ben's going to go deep and incomplete. And a flag is thrown. Antonio Brown with Corey Graham covering on the play. And this one is going to go against the Ravens. Like Antonio Brown gave a little late push off, but the flag was already thrown by that. Fire the pass. Holding. Defense number 24. Five yard penalty. Automatic first down. Like Corey Graham right off the bat here is going to grab the back of Antonio Brown's shirt. Just a little jersey pull. That is the only thing that everybody sees when they, the jersey gets tugged. And you can see the little give and take down the field. The flag was already gone by that point. So a couple of big penalties here helping the Steelers. Home team's been flagged eight times tonight. Ball at the 27, first down. To the end zone. And too deep, and the coverage is good on Sanders. He's doubled on the play. Graham is there with him. It'll be second and ten. Starting to see a lot more man coverage out of the Ravens than what we saw earlier in the year. They've got faith in these three cornerbacks on the outside. There's Corey Graham, a little double move, and he was beaten. He almost grabbed him. You can see him kind of grab for the hip, but did not. But the reason that they're starting to do more man coverage is they're starting to have more faith in this pass rush from their front four. They're getting better as Haloti Nada gets healthier. Second and ten, and it's tipped and incomplete. Tried to float it in to Bell, and James Ahedabo got back there, the safety, to swat it aside. Third down. What a nice play by James Ahedabo, and what a huge contributor he's been. It was supposed to be Michael Huff that took over that other safety position. Of course, both safeties leaving for the Ravens, and Ben just tried to drop it in over his head, but he had a bow able to get back and get underneath it. That would have been a touchdown. Mm. Third and ten. 
field goal still makes it a two possession game. So a big conversion here for Pittsburgh. As Roethlisberger throws and it's caught at the 11 yard line and they get the first down and set up a first and goal on a catch by Antonio Brown. Just remarkable timing here. I've been through that ball before Antonio Brown even thought about turning around. Working down the field, he knew he was going to go to him in man coverage the whole way, so he rolled that way to change the angle of the throw and make it easier. Great play by Ben. 84th catch of the season, fourth tonight for the league leader in receptions, Brown. And now a timeout is taken by Baltimore. Their second. First and goal. Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, and we've got hockey for you tomorrow on NBC. It starts at 1 o'clock Eastern time. Two of the original six, the New York Rangers and the Boston Bruins. From Town tomorrow, NHL hockey on NBC. Well, they got a touchdown last time they were in the red zone. Can they do it again against this top red zone defense? First and goal from the eight. Baltimore has used two of its timeouts. This could be significant as we head to the finish. And the pass is caught by Miller, and Heath Miller tries to work his way into the end zone, and it's going to be spotted just short of the goal line. Daryl Smith saving the touchdown. They'll go no huddle here on second and goal. Of course, trying to keep any of the goal line kind of defenses off the field. They're stuck over here on the boundary, and maybe on Bell. And this is Bell up. who walks in, walks into the end zone. Well, we see Tom Brady do this all the time. He gets a big play, goes right down to the goal line. Get him up there, don't let those big monsters in there, and Heath Miller comes down and blows open another hole. Here he comes right down in here. Catches Daryl Smith, and there's just nobody else there. Now we got ourselves a ball game. I'll say, well, it, it figures. It's Pittsburgh and Baltimore, and so many of these games are decided by three points. So many go right down to the end, as did the one in Pittsburgh on October the 20th. Beecham is shaken up, so the left tackle comes off for the moment. Under his own power, Sweezum is into try to reduce the lead to five. So nine and a half to go. This Thanksgiving night in Baltimore. 1914. Ravens. I'm very thankful that I was born in the great old USA. I was born to a mother who's just about the greatest woman a man could ever want to be around, into a great family. They taught me that uh, service to your fellow men is a great thing. We're not the only people on the planet. It led me to a life of teaching and sharing. I hope you'll all help somebody and remember what you're thankful for on this great day. Well, we've talked about Dick LeBeau for years and what a what a man he is and anybody who knows him knows he is really something extraordinary. Went into the Hall of Fame a couple of years ago and everybody was thrilled for him as the kickoff is a bouncing ball that's fielded at the 25 yard line and then run back to the 34. Carl Jezik, the backup fullback. It's the oldest. He has the oldest starting unit in the league. They average 29 years of age and of course a lot of that's on the back end with Clark Taylor and Polamalo and then we saw Brett Kiesel before he got hurt tonight in the game. So they're old back there. Well LeBeau's the youngest 76 year old we've ever known. He can shoot his age on the golf course about any time he wants to and he was a part of the original sort of Thanksgiving Day packages. Take it back low and slow, bro, is his mantra. That's it. But back in 1962, an undefeated Packers team came in to play his Lions. And Bart Starr got sacked 11 times in that game. And the Lions broke their streak with a 26-14 win. Fast forward several years, Dick LeBeau got hired by Bart Starr, goes down to the basement of his house, 
and he sees a picture of eight lions sacking Bart Starr in a poster size thing on the wall. He said, you know, I never really liked Bart Starr much until that moment, but gained a whole new respect for the guy when I saw that picture. Yeah, so Bart doing a little piece uh, on one of the earlier games today after Rice gains three that passed to Jones up to the 40 yard line. So it's third and four. Interesting strategy here by Baltimore going no huddle with a five point lead. And one time out, you thought they would start to take a little time off the clock, but that's not the case. But now they can take some more time off because Rice is going to get a first down and take the ball inside the Pittsburgh 40 to the 38 yard line. Big play, gain of 22. You know, sometimes you have these three blitzes in which you come on the blitz unless the back releases. You assume he's going to try and block you, but in this case, he released. And my guess is that was Polamalu's man. And when he released out of the backfield, he had to turn and run with him. There was nobody left to cover him. Six catches for Rice tonight, 38 yards. Here's Pierce. And Pierce looking for a hole, and he closes very, very quickly. Winds up in the arms of Al Woods. Short gain, second and nine. You know, all of a sudden now that Sean Sweezum in motion field goal they never got off starts to feel a little bigger and bigger, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Halfway through the fourth quarter. I think Tory Smith jumped. I think he did last All week start. too. Defense number 82, five yard penalty, still second down. So many false starts tonight against Baltimore at home. You know what happens, and all right, as a former wide receiver, I'm gonna say this. If people say, how in the world can a wide receiver, you're looking at the ball, you know, all that kind of stuff. You usually jump off sides at home because you can actually hear the quarterback make the calls. You're used to not being able to hear it. Second and 14. Here's Pierce, but he's going to get run out of bounds right after he makes the catch. That was the fifth fall start tonight against the Ravens. So it's third down and 12. Yeah, and here's one of those you don't necessarily go for the first down, but you'd sure love to have about seven, eight yards and give your kicker a shot at this one. So this may well be, it was it Bernard Pierce coming out of the backfield here trying to do a little catch and run action. Third down and 12 from the 40. Blacko. Joshua gets it away, caught. And to the 30-yard line, Taylor saves the first down. Torrey Smith makes the catch, but it sets up a 47-yard field goal attempt for Tucker. Hey, Torrey Smith and Ike Taylor on the outside top of the screen there. This is just turning into a slugfest between them. Is there a foul in there? Yeah, probably. But I don't think he quite gets there. And Joe Flacco doing a pretty good impersonation of Ben Roethlisberger tonight. Some of his slides around the pocket. But mission accomplished there. Don't get the first down, but set up this field goal attempt. 26 consecutive attempts have been made by Tucker. This one from 48. Cook puts it down. And Tucker's kick. Good. That's five field goals for him tonight. 537 remaining, but it's still a one possession game. Baltimore 22, Pittsburgh 14. Happy Thanksgiving. Well, you can download NFL Mobile and get live premium content like Sunday Night Football on your smartphone. Go to Star Store NFL to download or go to NFL.com slash mobile to learn more. 22 to 14. Ravens on top. 537. The temperature has gone from 37 to 27 on this clear night. Six yards into the end zone. Here comes Felix Jones, the ex Dallas Cowboy, who gets dumped at the 20 yard line by Shucky Brown. Well, over in the back in Northern California, John Madden looking in tonight. Happy Thanksgiving to you, coach, and your family. Coach Madden's going to pick the player of the game.
Good luck. It's not easy tonight. No. There's a lot of candidates. We, we may still have the winner yet to come, seeing how this thing goes. Although, if I, if I knew a little bit about John, Kelvin Beecham's at least going to have a chance. He might have a chance. Yeah. You know, John's not crazy about kickers, but Justin Tucker is in the hunt. There you go. At least for a leg. From the 21 yard line, first down for the Pittsburgh Steelers is Roethlisberger with that shoulder shake and the pump fake and a ton of time as the line does its job and the pass is broken up. Jericho Contrary, the intended receiver, and Graham reaches for his right hip after he defends on the play. Well, there's a lot of things to talk about on that play, but if Corey Graham is hurt, that is significant on the back end. That was, he had to cover Cotri on that one for about nine seconds. Hey, I've never seen protection that good. They left Heath Miller in to help block and Le'Veon Bell over here on this side and they just locked down that side of the defense and that clock just kept moving. And nobody was getting open. And now Graham after getting up slowly is able to trot off so it looks like he can come back in shortly. Has to be out for at least one play though. Jockey Brown comes in to replace him, and he'll get Antonio Brown on this side. There's Brown 84 Brown right there. There's your matchup. Does Roethlisberger go that way on a second and ten? Brown's going to play press coverage the way it looks right now. Safety help over the top. There, there he's he goes. Going to go that way. He goes by him, and it's Brown to the 40-yard line. So Brown wanted to get his hands on him at the line of scrimmage. Shockey that is and it was Antonio who was able to avoid that and get loose for 19. One of the toughest guys in the NFL to try and jam Antonio Brown just makes Shockey Brown look awful on that play and Ben was going that way the entire time big time play. Graham back in the game as you see so he goes on Brown right now wants the receivers to the left side. I think you still have to test Corey Graham find out how healthy he is. Ben's going to look over the middle this time and he's going to go to Heath Miller to the 48 yard line with 445 left in regulation. I guarantee you somebody in the press box right now is watching every move Corey Graham is making. That is their number one receiver, the top receiver in the NFL, and Antonio Brown, and Corey Graham is one on one. They've been giving safety help this way when he's been split wide in that three by one set. And they probably will here again with Matt Elam now in a help position. Second and two. And ben throws and that's caught. Nice grab by Miller. First down. Here's Michelle. Well, the Steelers are conducting this drive without their starting left tackle, Kelvin Beecham. He is questionable with a right knee injury uh, sitting on the bench right now. It doesn't look like he's re ready to come back in, guys. All right, thanks, Michelle. That means Mike Adams, the one-time starter there. He is 76, second-round pick out of Ohio State last year. Is the man in that spot. Be careful, though. Now you've got Suggs against Adams with no help. There's no back that side that can possibly help him here. Get this one out fast, Ben. And he does, and Miller makes the catch. And the longtime security blanket, the tight end, picks up 13 yards and a first down. Well, Ben's just done a masterful job tonight seeing these blitzes coming, and when they do, he just takes it quickly and gets it out to the hot read and picks up another first down. Gain of 13. Roethlisberger is thrown for. 207 yards. Smith wasn't even looking. He was giving a signal to the safety, and that's why it ended up so wide open. Inside three minutes. To the outside. Bell, he gets wrapped up, can't go anywhere. Jameel McLean making the tackle. And Pittsburgh is going to take its first timeout before a second down and nine. Sometimes you throw those hot balls. Hot passes and you just get any part of the ball you can. Forget the laces. So Pittsburgh taking a timeout. They have two plus the two minute warning. Not an issue right now. Second down and nine at the 34 yard line. Now 
it looks like single coverage down here at the bottom if Ben wanted to take a shot at Corey Graham now. And this time Graham is on Sanders. And Ben launching one and it's incomplete as Sanders went down as he crossed the goal line. Falling down reaching for it couldn't hold on third and nine. Oh my goodness he had it. And there's a flag down but upfield and it's against Pittsburgh. Second down. Ben saw exactly what I saw and that was Corey Graham out here on the outside. Didn't even disguise it just showed the single coverage took advantage and Sanders just could not stay on his feet. Yeah, it was a face mask call to a big one on Adams. The tackle coming back and even with Heath Miller over there to help, Mike Adams is no match unless he has improved greatly from where we saw him earlier in the year. It is a very tough matchup for him on Suggs. And makes it a second and 24. And there goes Heath to the other side, so no help now. Four man rush dump it off underneath Bell has room inside the 30 and Bell to the 20 yard line on a second and 24 first down Pittsburgh. Well that is a play that's relatively new now the offensive line here just come out and block in front of this screen it's like a middle screen with a wide receiver so instead of the outside receiver going out they send the lineman down the field and that was huge. Good block by the center Velasco. The ball is at the 20 yard line. Walkersberger as he throws an incomplete intended for contrary. And that's going to take us to the two minute warning at officially 157 to go. Baltimore and Pittsburgh. What else is new? Going right down to the wire. 22 to 14. For the game, the Wendy's post game report. The Madden Thanksgiving players of the game will sit down for a mini feast with Michelle. Chris and I will take a look ahead to our matchup in three days the Giants and the Redskins on Sunday Night Football coming up right after the game. Now, now, when you think you've got an advantage with something, with Suggs coming off the edge, sometimes an offense will pull a screen right behind it because you know he's going to be screaming coming off of there trying to get the sack. Let's see what Ben calls here on a second and ten from the 20 yard line. To the goal line caught and into the end zone Heath Miller for the touchdown. He's been doing it for nine years and clearly they'll go for two points here as Harbaugh looks and Checks it out on this on the board. He does get into the end zone. Does Miller as they review it upstairs as they do all scoring plays. Heath Miller eight catches tonight, 87 yards, and Adams comes limping off. Oh, but he did his job. A little out and up move. We see so much down in the red zone. A little outside, then up the field. Josh Bynes reacts to the first move, and here it goes. That doesn't matter. It always comes down to the last two minutes with these two teams. Well, I tell you, I could call these games. Ooh, that's close. Well, you know, the interesting thing about that, it could actually benefit the Steelers if he were down and they could burn a little clock here. Right. And just make sure they get into the end zone. Well, yeah, they're going to have detail. <laughs> we saw a similar play in the first quarter, which was initially ruled a touchdown, then it was spotted inside the one. The previous play is under review. You know, and now those timeouts that Baltimore took earlier in the game when we didn't think they were going to be very significant, those timeouts are pretty significant now. All scoring plays again reviewed upstairs, taking a look at this right now to see if he does indeed get into the end zone. And then clearly the next big thing, if he did get in, is what are they going to call for the two-point conversion? So Blakeman comes over. 
possession, possession. Knee I is down. Short. A little short. Yeah. Well, and his knee, there it is, right there. Mm. I, I think he's short. I think they have to run another play. And there's another significant part of this. Guy Wimper is now in the game, so they're down to their third tackle on that side now going against Trell Sucks. Need that right there, yeah. yeah. So that's where the ball is going to be spotted at about the nine inch line. So now let's say that they don't make it on first down. Baltimore is almost forced to take their remaining time out. Some bizarre way, provided they eventually score. That actually helps the Pittsburgh Steelers. But again, I mean, they, they've got to get it into the end zone. You start fooling around with playing with the clock here, and you don't know what can happen. We've been talking about the battle, Mike Adams, Trell Suggs. Suggs almost gets there and goes down around the knee, so that was a bit of a ticking bomb on that side. And now with Guy Wimper, who knows? After review of the play, the receiver's right knee was down with the ball position at the half yard line. It'll be first and goal from the one and a half yard line for Pittsburgh. So 152. Again, Baltimore had to spend two timeouts earlier in the half. Clock with Guy Wimper, the number three tackle in there. And now the Ravens, because of that time lapse, able to get their big defensive lineman in the game. Only allowed a couple of rushing touchdowns all year. Maybe on Bell, we'll see now with the big guys in. Here goes Bell, and he's not going to get in. It's a different set of circumstances when they were able to make that substitution. So Darius Webb came bursting through. But there's that timeout, though. The Ravens take their third and final timeout. This will be a 30-second timeout. I tell you, it's a heck of a play by a corner to shoot through there and make that play in the backfield. But they not, they didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage on that one. You know, things, Pass or run? What do you think? I, I, it's tough. I don't think you can just drop back and throw one with Ben standing back there for any period of time. I mean, Guy Wimper has been sitting over on the sideline going against Suggs. They're on the right hash, makes it tougher to do some kind of a move play this way. There's Mike Adams. I, I'm thinking you're going to get some kind of a pick play out of this one. You know, you're going to get some quick rub, a pick, and somebody sneaking underneath. you got the bunch down here to the right. A lot of crossing action and see if you can't free somebody up. Second and goal. Bell swings to the outside. Helmet goes flying, but he's in for the touchdown. It looked like they had him stop, but he's oh hurt. Oh, my gosh. Oh, so he goes into the end zone. He scores to make it a two-point game. But the helmet went off, and clearly he is in distress. Oh, my goodness. And Jimmy Smith is down, too. Oof. The rule now is the play ends immediately when the helmet comes off. But I, I oh, my goodness. Helmet to helmet. Clearly, Smith comes in. I thought he had possession crossing the line at least. That is that helmet was coming off. He took the second blow. Mm. So both guys are still down. And what a shot taken. Clearly you could see it. On the replay, obviously, the uh, the helmet to helmet blow. The concern about. Bell right now, their rookie running back who got a late start this year because of a foot injury. And now you've got a situation where you got 
two guys you're thinking about one in particular it's a two point game a two point conversion to come. And fortunately Bell getting up. And even the Ravens fans giving him a nice ovation here. Well, but you know this is a bitter rivalry but a classy one. And I'll tell you there's something else going to go on here right now too because it was ruled a touchdown. They're going to review this. Now the instant the helmet comes off and you pointed to this out Chris the, when the helmet comes off the play is over. So as they review it with Bell wobbly going back to the sideline if the helmet is off before the ball is across the goal line this won't count. What, what constitutes off. That's Boy, off. It, that's before well, he crosses the line. It sure looks like it. Yeah, this if, if I had to guess right now, I think they're going to put this ball again at about the six inch line because the helmet is off. And when the helmet's off, that's the end of the play period. No forward progress, nothing else. That's it right there. Oh boy. So they look at it and they're going to give him the touchdown. They already took a look at it upstairs and gave him the touchdown. Now the two point conversion. So Dwyer has to come as the running back it's and not now, over yet. No, I think I think Blakeman may have led him up to the line before they reviewed the previous it. Previous play yeah, is under review. That's what I thought. I mean, there's no way they're going to let this go without Blakeman coming over and looking under the hood. Well, you know what the replay official does. He takes every minute to review that thing. And until they get to the line of scrimmage, he can still be looking at it back and forth. But I have seen that one before. The minute that helmet comes off, it is it's done. And it is completely off there, and the ball is not across the line. Remember, was it the play with Jason Witten where the helmet came off and he ran about 15 more yards and and then they put this rule into effect. Well and, and the reasons are obvious. I mean and it's a good rule but an unfortunate rule for Le'Veon Bell who gave himself up for that touchdown and now it's going to be taken back. Well if it if it's not a touchdown it's still going to be third down and obviously two more shots at the end zone. So figure I mean this is crazy. You got Miller who looks like he's in but then they take it back. Then they don't get in with Bell then they get in with Bell but they may take this back because his helmet came off. Bell is hurt. Dwyer's in. And, well, it, and it may all benefit the Steelers. At the end of this time if they are burning time off the clock here. I mean it, it's the most bizarre ending I think I've seen to a football game. Nuances of this rules week. coming into play it's it's. Crazy. All right, here's Blakeman. After the play, his helmet came off with the ball positioned at the one half yard line. By rule, the helmet comes off, kills the play. Therefore, it's be third down and goal at the one half yard line, Pittsburgh. Well, as Good we song. surmised, no bell. The other backs are Felix Jones and Jonathan Dwyer. And again, obviously, a fourth down situation, so they'll get two cracks at trying to get into the end zone and still need the two point conversion. Now, Will Johnson, a fullback, comes into the game as well. Jonathan Dwyer, their leader at running back a year ago. Will Johnson flanked off in the bunch. I bet you he comes back inside the box. Somebody, somewhere, though. Johnson number 46 in the right slot. Cotterie in motion. And Roethlisberger is going to throw and it will be dropped at the goal line by Will Johnson. James Ahedabo is there. Fourth down. I think it would have been a touchdown had he caught it. Leaned it over the line. James E. Hedebo with his second big play. And oh my goodness, it is just a train wreck down here for the Steelers. Now Fernando Velasco, the center who replaced Marquise Pouncey, goes down. So you got your starting center, at least tonight's starting center, your one and two left tackles, and your starting running back. 
who will all be out of the game. That's Cody Wallace, who's a tackle by trade, and the backup center getting in some snapping practice here because he's going to have to snap it on fourth down. Take a look at we can see what happened to Fernando Velasco. Lodi Nada right here. And it just rolls right back on the back of his leg. Wow. You can't make this stuff up. Can't disagree with the call. All he's got to no. do is catch it and it's a touchdown. So they tend to Velasco. Fourth and goal. Velasco back to the sideline. And you see Mike Tomlin there said take him out. I mean he was still trying to determine whether or not he could go back on the field. The last minute he said take him out. And so now here we go with Cody Wallace. And you wonder if this limits. Does he do shotgun snap well? Has they ta have they taken a snap on the sideline? I mean, so many things come into play at this point. It's only a half a yard. Could Ben just quarterback sneak it? But you got a Lodi Nada in there. There's everything in play here. It's the longest half yard. Seventy-one thousand. The defense chant. They have Dwyer in the backfield next to Roethlisberger. You've got Brown in the slot to the right. You've got Contrary wide to the right. Roethlisberger fires touchdown. Contrary, who's his main man in the red zone. Contrary with only 34 receptions coming into the game but seven of those for touchdowns they switch it off Corey Graham thinks he's supposed to switch this off this pick but the inside defender doesn't do it so they end up with a walk in so all that mess that we just went through and all it did was take time off the clock for the Ravens to try to go the other way assuming they can get this two point conversion got to pull another one out of the hat. Brown in the slot. Contrary wide. Wallace with the snap. The first one was good. This one is good. And the pass is pulled in. But what are they going to say? No. Hits the ground. Emmanuel Sanders couldn't hold on. Shockey Brown was there with the coverage. So it's an unsuccessful two-point conversion but still an onside kick opportunity for Pittsburgh couldn't hold on Had a chance kind of goes right through his arms so two balls that were definitely catchable didn't work 22 to 20 obviously an onside kick to come and Pittsburgh of course in a position where if they can recover it they would have a timeout, and then you need a field goal to win the game. Uh, uh, uh. Is right. Let's go to Michelle. Well, meanwhile, running back Le'Veon Bell was taken back to the locker room. As you saw, he is being treated for a possible concussion. This is a young man who said it was his dream to play on Thanksgiving. He was lit up all week about it, couldn't wait. Had a fine performance, but back there being treated for a possible concussion now. All right, thank you, Michelle. And there's Velasco, and we saw Beecham come out. Saw Adams come out. And now it's off the foot of Sweezum. Again, you have to go back to the motion by Sweezum on the kick. I've never seen one botched in that way. Has to go 10 yards before Pittsburgh can recover. Now he's going to switch around. Now he's going to kick it off his left foot, and it will not go the required distance. Wow. Oh, man. So he tries to 
fool them by initially looking he's kicking one way then the other then goes back to the original way and the flag is for the kick being out of bounds and not going 10 yards. You know it's interesting did that ball go out of bounds or was it an illegal touch by a stealer before it got out of bounds because it never made it the 10 yards and Jericho Cotri on the tail end of that recovered the ball. Right. It was it was actually off of uh, I think Marcus Wheaton touched it first. Illegal touching. 89 the five yard penalty the ball spot first down. You know, they tried to go the double trickaroo and the left footed kick. Yeah, you know, you, I don't know. Yeah. It's not the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> you know, sometimes you can trick yourself into things, but what a football game. I, I tell you. If they played 16 straight times and they wanted us to do them all, I would do them takes all. Takes third and final. Oh, it's just a fantastic rivalry. So nine of the last ten, if this one holds, at 22-20 will be decided by three or fewer points. Pittsburgh takes its final timeout, but Baltimore can end the game on two kneel downs. Well, you have to think a little bit about the Pittsburgh Steelers now moving forward with the rash of injuries they got there on that last little series. Well, they're going to be five and seven. They have three of their last four at home. Right now, you got Denver, New England, Indy, and Cincy as the division leaders. Kansas City would be the number one wild card at the moment of Baltimore would be number two as this game comes to a finish. The others are in the hunt but a huge win for the Baltimore Ravens and a bitter loss for the Pittsburgh Steelers as they head home in a week and a half take on the Miami Dolphins while the Ravens try to get healthy as well. And take on the Minnesota Vikings here. They have Minnesota at Detroit, New England, and at Cincinnati. Is the reminder remainder of their schedule. John Madden marking his balance right now. We'll find out who the player or players of the game are coming up right after these messages from your local NBC station.